changes were permanent, and that they were ongoing, that they were continuing into the 21st century. And so on my return, the first and the most notable thing that I saw, or the change that I noticed, was the air. When I'd been in Mexico in the 1990s, the smog was so bad that most days you could barely see a block ahead of you. Coming back seven years later, it was the reverse. You could actually see most days ahead of you. In fact, a lot of days you could actually see the mountains that encircled Mexico City. And this was in part because of government policies. Um, they pushed big industry out of the center of the city. But it was also the sign, a visible sign, of a rising middle class and people being able to buy new cars that had catalytic, catalytic converters, so reducing the pollution from transportation in Mexico City. Another big change in Mexico City was the geographic landscape. And here the city had continued to expand and was really pouring out over the edges of the valley. So if you went to the west, you saw almost a new city unto itself, one that's called Santa Fe today. Uh, and it seems like a, a Texas city. It's full of big glass office buildings and gated communities and high-rise uh, residential buildings. Uh, and much of Mexico's moneyed classes began drifting this direction. But you saw changes to the east too, the traditionally poorer side of the city where the airport is. And here, whole neighborhoods that used to be called, uh, often dubbed the Ring of Misery. So this is where migrants would come into the city and you know, with nowhere to live would be under tin roofs and you know, very poorly, kind of haphazardly put together you know, sort of buildings. Um, these were being replaced and were being replaced very rapidly uh, by small uh, but quite solid homes. And you would see rows and rows of sort of neatly appointed little starter homes with hot water tanks on top disappearing in the distance from the main arteries that left the city. Another sign of this rising middle class. <coughs> Another thing that had changed was the daily rhythm of life in Mexico City. And here, uh, every week on the road, uh, one of the streets right near where I was living, the weekly tiangi market. So this traditional market would show up, they'd lay down their wood pallets and put up their big colorful tarps, and they'd sell you fruits and vegetables and pots and pans and children's clothes and electronics and everything else in between. So these were still there and thriving. But alongside those, what was new was you could go to Walmart or to Costco or to a <coughs> supermarket. And this provided everyday low prices all the time. 